Yes, yeah, so good evening, everybody. Um, how has your learning been? How has the learning been? Okay, so <laughs> today we want to talk about uh, the manual work mask creator. And then, I mean, some of the things we should be expecting to see if we are presented with this. Okay, for the MCQ tickets, I mean, this is not, I mean, for the MCQ paper, this is not something you read on so much, except maybe finding out the pregnancy gestation, I mean, at what gestation we use this first trimester abortions and all that. Okay, but when it comes to the OSCE paper, it, it can come to you in different formats. For example, it can appear in the uh, unmanned station, picture station. So they will project this and label it A, and then they will project either one or two or more of these and label them B and ask you to identify A, identify B, what's the procedure they are used for, indications, complications, okay, complications, and maybe, um, uh, I mean, how you would process this instrument for reuse, isn't it? Can ask you what else can they ask you? Can ask you the signs that indicate that the procedure is completed. So all this, I know you are very familiar with those questions. Okay. Or sometimes they can actually just show you this, and then I mean label the parts in a, on a, on, in the one station actually show you this, label the parts, and then ask you to identify the parts that they labeled. Then the questions I asked you actually follows. You may have to know the indications in gynecology and then the indications in obstetrics. For example, in obstetrics, if your patient has had maybe a secondary PPH, has delivered maybe two weeks ago, and then still comes with a secondary PPH, you know that the uterine returning or to may be likely to be retained for that conception, you would have to use the manual vacuum aspirator to actually evacuate the uterus. Okay? But there are several gynae indications, so like a first try, I mean, a legal termination of. And, uh, pregnancy, medical termination of pregnancy be, uh, before what, 13 weeks, isn't it? Because you see that, as we speak about it, I don't know, were you told that there, there were significances for, or there were something significances, if that is English, for the reason why they have many, many different sides of cannabis? Were you told that, that the cannula size actually determines, um, I mean, the gestation determines which cannula size to use? Were you told that? Were you told that? Yeah, so, if, if the woman is four weeks, you have to use the four week cannula. If the woman is 12 weeks, that is why MP is beyond really, it's ends at 12 weeks for most literature. So, the cannula size actually vary. That is why we have different cannula sizes. Haven't you wondered why? And I think you are just going to work with someone's uterus. Why don't you just create just one cannula for us to use for all and sundry? But you see that it depends on. So as you see the interval, you see that we have about eight cannula sizes. Four, four is the smallest cannula size you can have, and then twelve is our largest cannula size. So from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then twelve, no eleven. That is eight cannula. So you see that MBA kit actually comes like that. Eight cannula in one manual vacuum aspirator. Okay, good. So apart from the unmanned station, how else would you? Made to how, I mean, how else could be tested your knowledge and the skill regarding this? You are very familiar, isn't it? Sometimes it will be a procedure station. So the procedure is actually a dismantled, a dismantled, uh, or a disassembled MVA kit, and you are asked to actually assemble it. Or you are given a scenario that someone, you know, that this one is very expensive. This one is 500 cities. So do you think how much? How much is the guy paying? How much does only family charge for? Miscarriage, I mean, treating miscarriages with this. That the person, what one use they throw it out? No, we have, they actually process it. And, and it is more like a resource limited setting. Even even in the, I mean, those resource, I mean, endowed settings, you don't just use one and discard. It's not a glove. You actually have to use it and then reprocess it, process it for reuse. So um, maybe a vignette comes like, so someone has actually. Had an MVA done, and they want to reprocess this or want to process this for reuse. One of the things to do is actually to dis disassemble the MVA. Can they do that? Right? Then the questions follow like that. Is that okay? 
and then maybe the precautions to observe when using this and then maybe you have to know some i mean they want to test your rotation through the obstetrics and gynae department sometimes who knows the um, cylinder size so you see you need to know what system else so why has it been calibrated so that to help you know the amount of um, you back on see there is a word you have you have actually done do you understand good so we are going to go through that so you can yes you can be given that to actually disassemble or assemble or you can actually be asked to perform the uh, the uh, procedure so like when you do you go to the patient and then this time you have to sign an informed consent this this is a surgical procedure if if you've not really taken note of it it's a surgical procedure and so you need to what as part of your things you go to the patient you explain all those things you sign the consent form how you prepare the patient isn't it the fact that what you do, you give vagina uh, mysoprostol, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To ripen the cervix if the patient has not already started having the what's incomplete abortion. Because if it's incomplete, the cervix is already open, so there is no need to ripen the cervix. But if one of the indications actually is um, blighted open or missed abortion, there is nothing like cervical or something. Okay? So how do you ripen? How do you prepare the patient for, 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 the, for the procedure? You have to insert vagina mysoprostol. The fact that you can be asked the type of anesthesia you use for the patient, how you make the patient lie, so you, you should have seen the procedure being done. The patient lies in the, on the like you told me bed, okay, on the couch, like the floor position. You would have to sedate the patient. What anesthesia would you use? You can either use the paracervical block, which which o'clock positions would you avoid and why? The third position or the three o'clock position and then the nine o'clock position. Why? Because the cervical arteries actually come there. So if you are putting a lidocaine there, what, what are you going to do? Lidocaine is supposed to be a local anesthetic. When it gets into circulation, you know what's going to happen. So all these things, I mean, apart from paracervical block, what can what else can you do? You can do uh, a conscious sedation, right? With morphine. That is what we do here. Polypam, when I was announced that we really did the cervical paracervical block. Is that okay? So that is just something to introduce our discussion today. Is that okay? Alright? Okay, good. So, you can end the video.